levels of people really excited about what's out there. That crab 17 inches? <laughs> yep, in my crab pot. So now, let's learn about the area that we're in and check out the chart. And it'll show you with real clarity the different trolls that I like to make and the location that I like to fish. Up into the humps, I've done really well in here. This is where I've won a few derbies up in this area. Got some nice winter blackmouth. And I've always wondered what the bottom looks like. Well, here it is. You notice the ledge there that you're looking at? And the different type of marine life that's on the seafloor. And we're going to move along. Now, that's called a ratfish. And some of them are fairly large in size. Two to three feet, maybe. Real docile. Isn't that kind of neat to look at there? And we're sitting right now in about 130 feet of water. And this is what the seafloor looks like when you're trolling off of the Anderson Island humps, as we'll call it. And we're going to move along a little bit. Now, the current in here moves pretty fast. And when you get into this area off of Lyle Point, off the, which, uh, it's a channel marker. And then you move up towards the northwest. And you come up along what's called the staircase. And that's what you're looking at right now. Rocky in here. But look at the ledge again. It's steep all the way around this area. And it'll drop off into the 200, uh, almost 300 foot area out there off of the Nisqually. But that's mostly sand and mud. This area seems to hold more fish. I think it's because of the rocky bottom. Maybe not. Maybe so. If I take a look at the chart again, give you an idea, we're going to move up into the Nisqually now and look at this area. There's a lot of nice kings that tend to roll through this spot. However, it's a sandy type bottom and I would recommend that if you like to sea run cutthroat fish, hey, McAllister Creek. <laughs> Let's take a look at the seafloor in here now. It's a sand and mud mostly. And that is a type of sea star. Look at it. It's all white with kind of a Chrysler-looking emblem. <laughs> Pretty neat, isn't it? The, the different marine life that you see in the Puget Sound area. So let's get down into a little bit deeper now and sit on the seafloor and check out kind of what is going on as we move into the depth. Now we're a little... Oh, there's a salmon. We're a little bit deeper than 200 right now, but notice it's all sand. That's all it is. It's real sand and muddy off of the Nisqually Flat. There was another little salmon there. It's interesting, and you think maybe the lights would scare them away, but it doesn't. It seems to attract them over, and they flash through the screen. And if you want to get a better look, just push pause and you'll probably be able to grab it at that particular moment. I'm watching, I'm not quite sure what they are, if they're a baby flounder or some type of ground fish, but there seems to be like a little school of them moving in a circular motion. I think it's because of the light attracts them. But whatever they are, they're really, really small. I've noticed too, oh look at that, now see how that's wiggling and stuff, that has to be some type of life form, huh, interesting, I've learned so much from flying in the waters of our northwest, I've been clear up into the Straits of Juan de Fuca, all through Seattle, out in the 700 foot bottom depth out there, I even saw a halibut off of Blake Island, and now you're looking at the seafloor off the Nisqually Flats, Ooh, another salmon swam by. And we're going to move now with the chart and show you another area that I like. And I've done real well off of the buoy area. But again, the navigation buoy, the black one. But again, it's crazy on the marine snow as we look at the seafloor. You see all that? It's like being in your car driving down at night in a snowstorm that's kind of what it's looking like to me lots of marine snow and especially when we get that heavy rain 
and then it comes into the Nisqually and the Nisqually makes everything just peppered with dark brownish colored water but that's generally on the top 20 feet of water you get below that and it pretty much stays the same I'd like to thank you for taking a moment and learning about the South Sound. And if you have any questions, please email me up at tihokifilmyahoo.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.